Hello everyone and thank you for coming here in Paris uh, to discuss this great uh, environment that is uh, GNU Radio. I am uh, Thomas Lavarenne and I will talk about uh, my use of uh, GNU Radio uh, including its uh, pedagogical aspect. During this presentation I will take as an example uh, the RDS decoding, uh, the RDS signal which is a radio data system uh, of, uh, from FM radio. First, uh, I will quickly present uh, FM radio, then how to extract uh, the RDS signal, how to recover frames, and finally, how to decode and display the information. But uh, before that, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm an applied physics teacher in uh, BTS, which means uh, in French, brevet de technicien supérieur. It's uh, specifically a, a French diploma, equivalent to second year um, of a bachelor's degree. It's here. Um, and allowing you to find a job quickly uh, and for the best students, uh, opportunities to continue studies. Uh, during two years, students mainly study computer science from the physical layer to applications creation. So, uh, why I use GNU Radio? In this program, GNU Radio fits particularly well for the study of digital wireless communications, which is a large part of the physics program. Many students do not have the mathematical experience needed in, in signal processing to fully understand um, the concepts we need to speak about, and sometimes become demotivated quickly. A tool like GNU Radio is very important for that. It's rather simple handling, and it's quickly possible to do very interesting things and illustrate in concrete and visual ways uh, relatively complicated concepts of signal processing, uh, even for beginners. That's uh, what I will try to show during this presentation by uh, taking as an example the decoding of uh, RDS, signal of the FM radio. Uh, the RDS signal contains numerical information such as the name of the station, uh, the name of the program, etc. These are practical sessions that uh, allow you to work on a lot of interesting skills such as building an antenna, for the reception of the signal, which is uh, very weak, FM analog demodulation, digital filtering, uh, sampling, synchronization, BBSK phase modulation, correlation with uh, station code, um, decoding of frames, uh, display the, the information, etc. A particularly interesting aspect of the pedag pedagogical use of uh, GNU radio is that it can isolate difficulties such as the reception difficulty that can be eliminated by recording a signal in advance and replaying it uh, either in the room or uh, either um, through the source file. So first, uh, let's quickly see what FM radio is. Uh, each FM station contains mono information in baseband, a pilot at 19 kilohertz, the stereo information at uh, 38 kilohertz, and uh, the RDS signal at 57 kilohertz. So, uh, before attempting to decode the RDS signal, it can be interesting to extract the audio and listen to it via the computer's sound card. Uh, this is very interesting, uh, a little exercise that already involves uh, the concept of sampling, filtering, and decimation. Uh, you have the file source, which contains the raw data that were recorded uh, before. The WBFM receive block do the FM uh, demodulation, and the low pass filter blocks extract the audio and adjust decimation to send the right sample rate to the sound card. So uh, we can try. Here. 
you can change uh, the file uh, which is played. And another. Okay, uh, once this is checked, we can go to the RDS signal extraction. First, we filter around 57 kilohertz and get the modulated RDS signal that looks like this. But uh, what kind of uh, modulation is it? Uh, we see amplitude change. Uh, in the documentation uh, of the protocol, we see phase modulation. So it is possible to, to check uh, that by superimposing a reference signal at 57 kilohertz uh, with the signal source block. Here we clearly show to students uh, the phase change that will allow, uh, allow us to, to get the binary, binary information. This is a very interesting illustration of, uh, of what uh, BPSK is. Now we can uh, transfer this signal to baseband uh, by doing a frequency translation. And we can observe the variation of the phase and show that it contains digital information in, uh, in Manchester encoding. For that, we use a complex to arc block. On the other hand, we are going to observe the BPSK constellation. So we use the symbol sync block. Hervé Beuglen will explain us in more detail um, its operation later in the day. But in two words, it uses a timing algorithm to return a single sample per symbol. But to do this, it needs an estimate of the number of samples per symbol, here about uh, 11. Here you can see the signal at uh, the input of the block with uh, approximately 11 uh, samples per symbol. And there's a decimated output signal with only uh, one sample per symbol. OK, let's see uh, what it looks like, but uh, another little demonstration. We can see something uh, very interesting uh, about the phase. There is a, a digital signal uh, that looks like Manchester. Here. But um, the signal is not stable. We clearly see that the phase has a, a linear global variation. If we look at the constellation, we see two points corresponding to the BPSK modulation but these two points are in constant rotation. Uh, so what can this be? This is a very interesting question that requires going back to how the signal was uh, received. When the signal is received, the frequency of the local oscillators has been set to the frequency of the station, which corresponds to the frequency generated by the local oscillator of the emitter. Uh, so is it possible that these two frequencies generated by two different systems are exactly the same. Uh, what are the conditions that might explain a little difference? These are interesting questions to ask to the students at this time. To check uh, this hypothesis, we add a frequency variable here. Uh, frequency variable uh, to adjust the synchronization and we observe the change by gradually adjusting this variable. So we observe that the, the rotation slow down if the frequency increase. We can stop the, the rotation. But if we exceed a, a certain value of frequency, the rotation uh, go, uh, go back in the other direction. Okay. 
Uh, indeed, the direction of rotation depends on the sign of the difference in frequency between the two oscillators. From this experiment, you can see that the frequency shift between the two oscillators is about 2 Hz. Obviously, this manual synchronization has only an educational purpose. We use now the Costas loop block. We can see that the modification of uh, the frequency is totally compensated by the Costa loop, and have no visible effect on the signal. And the signal now is perfectly stable. Here, the, the frequency shift has no effect. Okay. So with this manipulation, we, are, we were able to illustrate and understand notions of uh, synchronization and the role of the Costas loop without going into great mathematical details. We use uh, the, the Costas loop. Uh, okay. So now uh, to retrieve and uh, visualize the frames, we had a threshold and try to synchronize the data stream on the station code. Here it is France Bleu Alsace, whose code is F405, which we will be written in differential Manchester. This code must be indicated in the correlate access code block, uh, so a tag named packet is added, and we can synchronize the visualization on the time sync block. Uh, the fact that uh, GNU Radio is open source is a big advantage for teachers. It allows to observe how blocks work and understand exactly what's happening. You can easily find uh, the source on GitHub. Uh, this shows that the correlate access code tag block performs a bit-to-bit -bit comparison to find the access code. So, what's the result? We see that various frames are detected and we can check that the Correlate access code tag block works well. To process the frames, we choose to cut them and send them to separate files on the hard disk for post processing in Python. Uh, the tag file sync block works with a burst tag. If it uh, detects a burst tag with the PMT uh, true, it opens a new file and saves all the data until it detects a new burst tag with a, a PMT false. To add uh, the tag named burst to our data stream, we write a Python block, which for each detected packet tag, adds a burst tag at the beginning and at the end with the correct PMT values. It's the role of the RDS packet divider. RDS packet divider is a Python block you can see the code here. It's here. <laughs> we add a new tag burst at the offset of the packet tag with PMT true. And then we add another tag with name burst with PMT false here at the offset and the right number of samples later. But if you are interested, you have a good tutorial on the YouTube channel of the European GNU Radio Days on TAG <laughs> and how to build a block like this. Now to terminate this presentation, we will quickly show how to decode and display the information. For that, uh, uh, Python post-processing is used to decode the differential Manchester and extract the binary information and then display the corresponding text. Once the binary frame is obtained, it's not very difficult to extract uh, the bytes corresponding to the, the data and convert them uh, into text using the ASCII code. 
doing all this operation, you can easily decode the frames and get the, the text information. Uh, just open the file, uh, read the bytes, and uh, read the doc, of course, and uh, no major difficulties. So the result, you can see if we launch a the script, uh, I can't uh, do it here, but uh, later in demonstration, if you are interested, I can show you. And you can see uh, something like this. Look, you see the, the name of the station. Here it's uh, France Bleu Alsace. The name of the song, Dis-moi que l'amour, of uh, the <laughs> Marc Lavoine. Okay, but I can show you uh, a, a live demonstration uh, uh, later uh, at uh, Coffee Break. So to conclude, the RDS is maybe uh, an old protocol, but it's still in use and very interesting to study. From the reception of the signal uh, to the display of information, students work on many notions of physics, uh, signal processing, and computer science in a concrete way, which is an important source of motivation as working with real signal too. So uh, thank you to Jean-Michel, with whom I have been talking a lot about this. Thank you to Cyril Morin for the help on the tutorial on tags and uh, the creation of the Python block. And of course, a big thank you to all the developers and contributors of GNU Radio. And thank you all for your attention. And see you at the coffee break. <laughs> thank you. Perfect timing, thank you, Thomas. So indeed, we had a lot of fun with Thomas learning how to, so Thomas was teaching me how to use tags and how to decode these uh, RDS, and that, that's definitely one of the highlights of our teaching, uh, how to address uh, BPSK, because we all know that now phase modulation is, is being used uh, in most communication, and you're gonna see it in all the next presentations, uh, especially for satellite communication. Uh, just uh, one question about uh, you know the live traffic we can uh, see on the, our in the car on uh, the Genesis map. There is some live traffic information. Uh, is it also uh, using this uh, RDS uh, channel? Yes, it is. Uh, actually, R RDS uh, is being used for traffic uh, communication. It's the TC block. And there's a very beautiful article on how to introduce, uh, how to prevent someone from returning home. So you inject uh, unwanted traffic communication. And uh, <laughs> because you put a traffic jam, you put uh, uh, accidents and so on. So you prevent someone from returning home by injecting uh, unwanted RTS traffic. So it's, it's one of the beautiful articles about uh, RTS uh, attacks. Have you considered tripling the pilot carrier to get your carrier wave for your... Uh, for your uh, RDS data because they're actually synchronous. So you would not need a Costas loop. <laughs>